actually anger to HD. Yes, this is um, Digital Electronics, LN 133. And first thing I'm going to do is call your name and check your homework. Let's try to make it as quick as possible so we don't waste, waste any time. Corey Adams. Do you think you understood? Yeah, yeah, I did until I realized when I was checking with them. I had to use backwards because I was like, what the heck? How is this not working? And oh, this okay. one I try to do, but I don't think I quite understand how to come up with it. On 1.23? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll go over this today. Thanks. <clears throat> ben? He's not there, is he? James? <coughs> you feel pretty good with those or? Uh, the only one I was confused was twenty five. The yeah. Alright. Alright, we'll we'll go over those today then. Dakota. No homework. J Jesse. Pass that first problem. You did two. Of them. This is this the first one? Okay. Do you not this have time to do the homework? Or no, I couldn't. It? Could not figure it out. I've been going over. It. I couldn't get used to that hexadecimal system. Oh, okay. So you got stuck. They yeah. Kind of, kind yeah. of stuck. Okay. Oh, I do have some tutoring for you. Well, I think... Uh, if you... Actually, it's after... It's 11.40. I think for anyone, I have to talk, but... Um, talk to the guy who's going to be doing the tutoring, but he's going to try to come over on Mondays and Wednesdays at 11.40 to like 12.10. Oh, that's the one they told me about yesterday evening after classes. I went back over there. Oh, really? And they said they was going to sign someone and they would text or call me. So, I, I actually, I need to communicate with him a little bit more because I asked him a question he hasn't responded yet. So, let me let me just check and see okay, cool. more on that. But any of you guys who are struggling a little yeah, bit, I'm going to try to work on getting a tutor over here. Santuan's not here. Christopher. Notes. And there's a home. Okay, good. Any problems with it? Uh, no, just that one right there. I don't know how. Periodically, 20. Yeah, because the, all the other stuff they wanted you to do on it, I couldn't figure out how to do that one. Okay. Because where it's, it is different. Okay. But the rest of them, not a problem. Leon. Okay, but you're okay with the hex? Okay, that's good. Jason? How did it go for you? It's pretty good. I don't think I see all of it. Is this all of it? No, just didn't have good work there. I just did a little bit of it. Except for that one. Okay. You're really abbreviated compared to most people. So really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
know how to do it. I just said, like, those are real easy to do because I just split them up into fours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're not that bad. The hardest one, I think, is going, like, to decimal or something. Mm-hmm. You know, like, dig- hex and binary are easy, but going to decimal is more to Austin? Any problems with it? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I had problems with one point two three. The waveform. Uh, yeah, I went back and like reread it, and I, I ended up having to go to the back of the book and try and get some help with the answers because I couldn't figure it out. Okay, I'll give you some help today with that. Okay. Gary. Any problems? No, no. Do you understand the hex yeah. in the waveform? Yeah, okay. Was okay. Okay. Lucas. Okay. Are you? Um, I, did it go well for you? Yeah, I did fine. Okay. Uh, the B on the A periodic. I uh, said we can figure it out. I don't think I converted my megahertz from hertz, right? I'll give you guys the solutions in a minute so you can check it. Okay? Okay, thanks. Don? <clears throat> Any problems? No. No? Okay, good. Kevin? Yeah. Night, it looked like something different than what I did. I checked it right I before did I did change. It. I did add a few things, yeah. See, I had already done all of them just like right before I checked it and then you changed it. Yeah, I, on the homework, I, I instead of making you guys do all those A through whatever, I changed it A, A through C because I didn't realize that last year I, I made you guys do so many. I just had a little bit of problem. So, one, one, okay. One, two, one, I, I still worked it out the best I could there. So, yeah. So, on Moodle, I did add a, f- a couple of problems because um, I think last year I forgot to assign uh, one of the one of the problems, and that problem will be on the quiz. So, just make sure you review those before the quiz. Review all the ones on Moodle before the quiz. In fact, uh, just as a comment, I mean, for, for this particular quiz, I don't... I, th- I believe it may be true for all of them, but I know for sure it is on this one. Make sure you understand everything in the sections that we're covering. Not um, Just because a homework problem is not assigned or just because an example in the book has not been highlighted doesn't mean that that example or that problem may not appear on the quiz. So anything in that reading section is fair game for the quiz. Okay, then. Tyler? Okay, the waveform one? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, we'll go over it. This. Okay, thanks. Clarence? Uh, no problems? Okay, thanks. Okay, um, let's go back here and have another study group like we did the other day and pair up with the same people that you were when we did the quiz. Here's the solution like that. All the guys
Okay, hey guys, we're going to go ahead and start a lecture now. Sorry to cut you guys off, but we got we got like 25 minutes left. So today we're going to start a new topic. It's going to be called the basic logic functions, and it's also a new chapter. We're in chapter two now. The test, the quiz that we're going to have, um, we're not going to have the quiz on Friday. We're going to have it on Wednesday of next week. But it's going to cover, the quiz will cover today's topic and the homework that you just had, along with the new homework problems that I added to that homework. It's on Moodle. <coughs> So, how can we get the logic of our brains into a computer? Our ability to reason and compare things. One of the most basic ways that we can get that function into a computer is with logic functions, like AND gate, OR gate. So we're, we'll go over those basic functions today. <coughs> the three basic functions are AND, OR, and NOT. The logic functions can be expressed algebraically through, through two truth tables and by using electronic circuits. And the handout I gave you is kind of showing you those three different methods. We have a, a symbol diagram, truth table, and then we have the, the equation on the practice sheet that I handed out. So al algebraic representation uses a Boolean algebra and it uses Boolean variables that have two states. Boolean operators include AND, OR, and NOT. So for the Boolean operator, what we're using is math symbols to represent these gates. For example, we use a plus sign to represent the AND. I'm sorry. I'm we use the multiply sign, or we use the dot. We use the plus sign for or. And then for not, we use a bar across the variable, across the top of the variable. The truth table representation defines the output of a function for every possible combination of inputs. So we basically what we do is we list all the inputs. And we list every single possible combination of those inputs. So a system with n inputs has two to the n possible combinations, two times n. So for example, uh, two inputs would be four, four possible combinations. The electronic circuit representation uses the logic gates to perform basic algebraic functions. So in the electronic circuit representation, we usually draw what we call a symbol. And then you just have to memorize what the function of the symbol is. But since we're very visual in nature, it, it does help to, um, to have the logic representation. Gates can be represented by schematic symbols. Symbols can be either distinctive shape or rectangular shape. And we'll talk a little bit about those in a minute. The distinctive shape symbols use different graphic symbols to represent different logic functions. Whereas, um, and they also use a bubble to indicate the not function or the inversion. Okay, so we use this, for example, on the on the AND gate, we can use a bubble to represent an AND gate. That means an inversion of of that uh, function. And then we have the rectangular outline schematic symbols, the, the IEEE 
symbols, which are a lot. I mean, they're not really used that much in the United States, but um, all functions are shown in rectangular form with a logic function indicated by standard notation inside the rectangle. And the notation specifying the logic function is called the qualifying symbol. And then we use an inversion is used, is indicated by a one half arrowhead. It looks kind of like that. It represents inversion. And then the not function, one input and one output. The output is opposite logic level of the input. So it, this is also called the inverter. You have a triangle, you have a bubble on the output. The bubble represents the not function. So if you don't have the bubble, for example, if you just have this symbol, this is what we call a buffer. And the buffer, you have a one on the input, you have a one on the output. But on the not gate or the inverter gate, if you have a one, then you have a zero on the output. Also, if you have a zero, you have a one on the output. We call this the complement another term you can say it's a complement input is the or the output is a complement of the input and this not not function can be represented using boolean uh, representation we call it boolean algebra and what we do is we say that y or the output we usually use y to mean output And we usually use A, B, C, D in order, depending on how many inputs we have to represent the input. So this represents the input. And what it means is the input is inverted. That's represented by the bar. So this is input. And you obtain the output, the inverted version of that. So take A, invert it, and that equals the output Y. So the NOT function, called a NOT gate, or it says more usually an inverter, and that is, that's the case normally. Um, distinctive shape, shape triangle, we just talked about that, and in the, in the rectangular shape, we use a 1 and the inversion one half arrowhead, which I'll show you a symbol for that in a minute. So, this is the typical standard one that we use mostly in the United States. I think this is actually called the ANSI, the ANSI symbol. And this down here is called the um, IEEE standard symbol for not function. These are these don't really look very intuitive to, to me. And so you have the little triangle. Notice the triangle is trying to indicate an inversion. And you can have it on the front or you can have it on the, the back. Or in other words, you can have it on the input or you can have it on the output. Either way, it still performs the same function. The AND function is used when you have two or more inputs. Okay, and, and you have one output. The output is high when all of the inputs are high. So that is the AND function. The output is high. You have one output, and it's high when all the inputs are, are high. Well, that would be whether you have a two input AND, a three input AND, or more. So this would be a two input AND. So the output would only be high if both inputs were one. You could have a three input AND, and its output would be only be a one when all the inputs are a one. And you can also cascade these things together. But that's actually a, a lesson for a different day, so we won't talk about that right now. <clears throat> but the most typical gates you'll see in the packages would be two input and three input AND gates. Now, if you want to list, if you want to list the AND function, not as a symbol but as a table, then this would be the table format. 
Now, what we do on the table format is for a two input AND gate, if we label this A and this B, you always have to label your inputs and your outputs in order to, to know what we're talking about. But um, since there's two inputs, every possible combination of this would be listed out. Basically what you do is you take the binary number system and you count every bit until you have all of them. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's four possible combinations. And then you list on the output, the Y output, you you designate when you have a 1. So you have a 1 when both A and B are a 1. So that's the AND gate function. All the other outputs are going to be 0. Now the Boolean representation for the AND gate is the, the dot. Also sometimes people use a multiply sign. It's not really multiply, but we're just using those symbols for that, even though it has, has very little to do with real uh, what we would consider as multiplication. So we would say that y, if I drew this symbol on a quiz or a test and said, what is the Boolean representation of this symbol? What I would expect you to do is say y equals a b or a dot b or a times b. Okay? And that's just the basic level. I mean, we can do more with that. I could add a bubble here and ask you to represent that, but that'll be for, for a different day as well. So this is just the basics for today. Okay, AND gate function electronic circuit called an AND gate. Distinctive symbol. The rectangular shaped symbol uses a ampersand as a designator. So I already talked about this symbol, the ANSI symbol. The IEEE symbol is a square box just like all of them and it has an ampersand in the middle of it okay and that's it okay you have to label of course you have to label a and b and you have to label y as well but in a real circuit it may not be a and b or y it may be a uh, clock and enable and your output could be you know your clock 10 megahertz or whatever Normally, in a, and you would assign these variables normally in your Cortis 2 software or whatever design software you're using to capture your design. And of course, the three input, you would just add another C input. Okay. Actually, sometimes what people do <coughs> when they have a lot of inputs is they'll. Um, oh, actually, not that. <laughs> they will kind of extend the gate out like that <laughs> and they'll just add more inputs. So just draw a wire, just draw a line out. So yeah. Now how many can uh, a normal AND gate handle? How many inputs can a normally handle without it causing an issue for the gate? Um, the, they're they're designed what whatever they're designed to be is they can handle. So if it has Ten, then it can handle ten. But um, most of the ones we have are just like two or three inputs. So, and you can string these together to get more inputs. But right now, we're not really going to be talking about that. And of course, the IEEE is the same thing. You just have three inputs. It has the ampersand and a, and a rectangle. What is the function or the table diagram for the AND with three inputs? So this one has three inputs. Well, what we do is we list A, B, C. You can see that the number doubles each time you add an input because it's just like the binary counting that we did um, a few days ago. You have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So you ha you're going to have seven possible input, or eight, I'm sorry, 0 to 7. And then the only time you're, the Y is going to be a 1 is when 
you have all ones. So the very last value is going to be one. All, everything else on the output is always going to be zero. <coughs> or function <coughs> is two or more inputs and one output. The same, the same as an AND gate. You have to have two or more inputs because you have to have something to compare with. And the, the output is high whenever one or more of the input is high. So it's, it's really completely opposite of the AND gate. It's, um, <clears throat> well, not completely opposite, but it's different than the AND gate. Um, what's completely opposite of the AND gate is actually the NAND gate. So <coughs> not really the correct statement. But the OR gate is different than the, the AND gate. So you only need one input to be a 1 in order for the out to, output to be a 1. So you could have both inputs be a one that would satisfy that criteria, just like the AND gate. But you also are adding any of the other inputs are a one, then the output will also be a one. Another way to say this would be the output is is low only when all of the inputs are low. So the output is low only when all of the inputs are low. So <clears throat> you can see that here on this diagram. This is a table diagram. We call this a truth table because it tells you the true state of the outputs. When you have a zero, zero, you have a zero on the output. All other cases, you have a one on the output. Well, another way to look at this is anytime you have a one on either one of the inputs, then you always get a one on the output. And the Boolean representation for this is a plus sign. So we would say, if I drew this symbol, oh, wrong symbol. If I drew this symbol, it's kind of difficult to draw an OR gate sometimes, but the way you do it is you just really draw, you draw three arcs. You draw one arc, you draw another arc to the middle, and then you draw another arc like that. That's typically how we draw it. You draw the two inputs and then you draw the one output. You label the inputs and you label the output. And there's the OR gate. And if I, if I draw this on a quiz and say what is the Boolean representation for this, then this is what I'm looking for. Y equals A plus B. Or function electronic circuit. Okay, so what does the symbol look like? There's two symbols. The one we already talked about, the ANSI one. Now the IEEE one is again a rectangular symbol and it has a greater than equal to equals to one. I don't really know what the meaning is behind that. I guess I could think about it a little bit and try to justify it, but I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to use it. This is a whole lot easier to see. But on the quiz, are you going to need to know this? Yes. Yes, you will have to know it because it is IEEE standard. And normally IEEE, they're, you know, they're the, the number one standards body for the electronics. We're hoping that someday they're going to change their symbol. <laughs> But they have not faced reality that no one likes to use their symbol. <clears throat> active level. Active level means that um, the lo is the logic level defined as on for a circuit. That's what that means. Lo the logic level that's defined as on for a circuit. So when a logic when a logic high is defined as being on, the signal is considered active high. So if we say that a certain circuit or for example let's say for, say for example many times the enables on inputs are going to be active low that means that a low is actually going to turn on the circuit for example a microprocessor or a analog to digital converter will have an enable bar symbol so it may have an enable bar symbol have enable 
to the bar. And the reason, why, why do you think it has an active low enable? Why do you think it has an active low enable? Let's say you have a microprocessor here and everything is controlled by what? A voltage, right? What What is the state of the voltage, your 5 volts, before you turn the switch on? Zero. So what would happen if um, what happened if your enable was active high? So your signal would, would start off zero, then it would go high like this. So the, the problem is, is when you first power up a device, you don't have five volts. You don't have a logic high signal really defined at all. But you do have a logic zero. You, you can make something low at startup. So, and it's a whole lot easier to make a signal low at startup than it is something high because you, when you first flip a switch, you don't have a high voltage to start with. Okay, so um, that's why most enables are active low, is because that's what you've got before you flip the switch. Everything is low, so you want everything to be disabled. When you when you have zero volts, you don't want things flipping around and toggling and and glitching. So that's why we have this um, active low logic. So active this would can be considered active low. Okay. Now if I had enable on this processor, this just was called enable and had a wire like this, then that would be considered active high. I don't know if you guys can see there or not, but enable with just a wire, that's active high. There's no bubble here, and there's no bar here. So that's considered active high. Conversely, if I had a symbol that said enable with a bar, or a bubble here, or either one of them, sometimes they put a bubble, sometimes they put just enable bar, sometimes they put both. It's better to put both. Then this is considered um, active low, logic level. It's a little confusing this whole idea of active level. So, it, if you have any questions, I guess just ask me outside of class. But that's pretty much all there is to it. It's normally done on enables or disables. Um, so, hopefully, everyone took notes. So, I'm going to go around and you guys can work on your little activity. And what I want you to do is draw an AND gate, an OR gate, and NOT gate. And you want to do it inside the box or use the box? Uh, no, use, draw it inside the box okay. and draw the truth table without using your book. So you can use your book if you, uh, after you've attempted it without the book. But let's, let's try not to use the book. Let's see how well you guys took notes. John Engate, John Engate, draw the truth table. Draw right beside of it, the IEEE one. So yeah, what we want is ANSI and IEEE symbol. You don't have to do the De Morgan's equivalent because we haven't done De Morgan theory, theory yet. So you don't really know what that one is, but we can do everything up to the Boolean expression. So the y equals 
do all the way up, including the y equals expression. And once you get through that one, keep going. We'll do the OR gate. We'll do the NOT gate. So I do that with the Morgan's box. No, you can turn it over. There's double sided. It's double sided. Yeah, you can do that. You can do the OR. Skip the OR. I'll give you guys another one. There's one on the back, too. There's a Oh, okay. Can you do the booty expression for me? Oh, yeah. Sure. See if you guys cannot use your notes. I know a lot of people freak out on the test, but this is your chance to, to freak out with it's not a test and then see if you can do it and then. It's a greater than or equal. Or oh, no, 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 it's not. It's the uh, it's the one. It's a one. It's a one in there. It's one. Uh, it's a lot of reasons. 
Yeah. Why it's a one, I have no idea. Is that right for the not gate? Um, no, the, the not gate is... like that or or you can do that and then the, well the knot gate only has well that's kind of confusing the knot gate doesn't have um, only has two inputs so it only has one input I'm sorry it has one input so you only have two possible combinations and it's it looks like that they have a yeah yeah. So you just have to scratch out that tree thing on that one. And then the expression. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. The Boolean expression is going to be like that. You put a a bar over the A. That shows that A gets inverted and then it gets it into Y. Okay. Uh, 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 Ten thirty. Uh, uh, Eleven forty. And then we have lab. Uh, one point. Like the lab. Monday, Wednesday, you have lab. Alright, let me confirm this. Not you. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. The table would be yep. opposites. Mm -hmm. The boolean would be. We didn't, I didn't see the boolean on there. It's going to be. So it takes you take a and then you invert it and then that gets set equal to y. Oh, oh, because it's the, the inverse of the bar. Yeah, it's with the bar. Yeah. If I get a minus anything, could you fill it out for my thing? So These are for. Okay. Sure. I might have to get a tutor in more or something. Okay. These are for our notes? Yeah. Yeah, you keep those. Great. I'm surprised. I turned my other one, my tutor in for my English and math, and I still ain't got anybody calling me yet. Okay. So I don't know how long that takes for that. Yeah, I would say, though, I can tell today you didn't pay first our time, so you didn't learn anything. So you can't. You're not going to learn anything if you're on your phone. And we're just going to be in here. Sorry about that. It's okay. Today is just. Okay, so possible combinations you only have one to zero and one. And then. The output is going to be incorrect. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And you can draw this like this. And the ANSI symbol. The ANSI symbol is uh, for the knot. Is has like a one here, and then it has like that triangle is trying to represent that bubble, that bubble, or you can do it like this. It doesn't make any sense. So the I'm not saying the, no, this the is right anti. This is I triple H. Oh, okay. It's like that triangle. This is the. Um, and this one doesn't have a one there. It's just yeah, it's very very bad. That's right. That's right. This doesn't have anything inside of it. But the, this one does. Yeah. Yeah, like that. And then that's right. Yeah, that's right. Is there one in there? Oh, yeah, you can invert one in It's greater than less than. Right. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Greater than less than. Greater than less than one, okay. This only time I've seen that is on the same. A few European branch. The same here is with both of these. Right, right. This is the same thing. It's this is the same. Table, yeah, two tables yeah, the same. Two tables yeah. the same. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, because they're all the same function. I mean, that's the same. same. If, 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 if you hook that chip and rid it with a... Yes, you want you know more that practice? That. Here's another practice one if you want. You, you want another practice yeah. one? Okay. Every once in a while it comes out of Chicago and it's different. When it comes out of their Maine and Atlanta, they got a huge terminal down in Atlanta and they got everything. Like, uh, not electronics uh, so much, but all, anything electrical or mechanical. They've got it. Okay. Wow. That's my master car. They come up on uh, There's your hot dip galvanized. Oh, yeah. They've got a lot more galvanized, a lot more zinc on them than the uh, electroplated galvanized. Oh, okay. And you can see it especially on these uh, rate shanks. That's a whole lot more than electroplate. Electroplate is about like like maybe five layers like layer thick. <laughs> yeah, five layers <laughs> thick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know how I many it is, but it ain't much. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. huh. I thought oh. I had a box of 16 hot deal, but I don't remember now I used them on a job. 50 pound box. Time to play the copper. I'm going to set up one of those uh, with a battery with uh, using uh, the other end of uh, white vinegar. I'm going to see what that does. Mm. White vinegar, all it is is mild. If it's a field white vinegar, all it is is cone uh, mild acid. Mm. So it should work. Yeah, the battery. it should work. When I say mild, it Put it up your nose. You know. <laughs> I think, in fact, if you get a nosebleed, huh? take you some uh, white vinegar, put it in your nose. Huh? It's colorized. Like right of course, it feels like your head gets on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I 
done it about four times when I was in the legislature for some reason. Four years ago, three years ago. It works. Mr. Halstead. Yeah. I got your email about the lab kits. Mm -hmm. so oh, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to financial aid because my Pell Grant still hasn't come. Mm -hmm. And my VA money won't come for next month. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go see what they can do. If there's anything possible that, that I can get my books and stuff from, like some assistance. Because I, I have five people living with me. I can't afford that crap. Okay. So I'm going to go to financial aid and, and after this class and see what I can do. Okay. And my son has orientation, so it's iffy on whether or not I'm going to be in lab today. Okay. All right. Kids and... Yeah. Kids and money, man. Just you know? keep in keep in mind that you only have six absences and then you get dropped. I know. How many absences? What's what's lab this afternoon? This class? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. So, can I see my absences? So I can write them down. Yeah. And uh, one thirty-eight. You have three. Three from one thirty-eight. Uh, from 138? Yeah, that's all I need is from 138, because that's the only one I'm going to miss today, if I, if I, that's it. So we have, two. Uh, two as currently? Yeah. Okay. All right. Got messed up again. I told you screw that. Starling? Yeah. Oh, that's good. We do have a rocket meeting on Friday. I don't know if I mentioned it. Did that make sense Rocket meeting on Friday at 9? After the digital class. How many times have you passed it before you like that? This we're gonna order them this week. There's, there's some people who are gonna be on order on here. I'm just gonna tell everyone if they don't order it by this. Uh, I already sent them an email. If they don't, if they don't order it by Thursday, then they're not. Well, I know, I know. Teach it so they can stay here. No, they're here. No, I mean like during. Yeah. If you don't have that number. I can pull up on my wife's computer. You can just keep bringing them up. You only got to need them during the time. Yeah, I can do that. I would take them home with you because you're probably going to be most of your work at home. Well, if you have any issues, we'll... Because, you know, we have a mess of our jobs or something like that. If we have any issues. Yeah, I mean, that uh, all I have to do is picture it. Have it. Yeah, yeah. You can have software. You can have an arm core on there. Yeah, that's what I said. Because some of my ideas are going to require it. I'm going to do that. Well, I can. You know, the one
Yeah. <laughs> I don't have all the knowledge yet to yeah. put it all together. That's the hard thing is finding time to do it. And there's like finding the right parts too. I mean, that, that's another thing that's hard for me is like trying to figure out which one's your tires. Down Instead of going overkill, mm -hmm. like minimalizing the part of the list, you can use what comes in the whiteboard. I'm almost adding on this. You might buy this. This book. I thought of uh, something like that. There's another car that was up there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know if we were in a room there. I didn't have a good place. Well, there's yeah, there's 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 they're just, they're just waiting for you guys to order because they don't, they're not going to order it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm back there. Like, uh, pull like car road all the time. How you doing, Good. Good. How you doing? You're on the front the what? Yeah. 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 <laughs>
How did you do the uh, the cut and whatnot? From this? That's, I got it in my downloads right now. Um, just cut. This is downloads. Yes, yeah, it's, it's downloaded in in the computer. But then go to program files, and Eagle, and then UPL, ULP files. Uh -huh. Here's a little thing that changes your view. I don't know, I'm still getting used to this computer. It's got Windows 8 in it, and I'm far more better with stuff. Oh, yeah, let's just put it over here. I'm going to drop it. All we want to do is take this and move it to here. Why does it say move this folder? It's not a folder, it's a file. Okay, we're just going to move it anyway. Continue. But it's not a folder, it's a file. So I don't know what's called a folder. I have no idea. Must be a glitch in the, the program. Absolutely. 